Welcome GTV family, Facebook family. This is the greatest part of the, of the service is the giving. Um, your tithes and your offering. But your giving, your offering, is, it plays a big role in the church community, especially in this church, because we take we, we, we touch the homeless, the sick and shut in. We, we touch in areas that most churches are not even touching. So we're just asking you to give your best offering, give your best tithe, and, um, and be a part of this ministry because this is a part of the Christian walk. So walk with us as we walk. And uh, the way you can give is give a fire, cash out, and I'll mail in. And we thank you. God bless you. We love you.
to call it. I wish I had about five people to call that name. In the sanctuary, demons tremble at that name. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus.
feel the Holy Spirit.
our Facebook audience, but we got a pause for a five second identification break. Hallelujah, because the Holy Ghost is here. Woo! I feel a refilling. I feel a refreshing. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God of heaven, we thank you. We thank you for your sweet visitation of your spirit today. Now, God, we ask you right now to have your way in this place. Your people are crying out, fill us <laughs> until we overflow. Many of us have been going through this week, this month, this year. So, Father, fill us up with your Holy Spirit. We're coming to you as humble as we know how. We're not coming to you with the big head like we got it all together. But God, we get weak sometimes. So fill us again. Fill us till we overflow. Now God, let us stand behind this sacred desk in the midst of your people. Pray right now, God, that you will hide me behind the cross. Hide me so far that your people will see none of me but all of me. If I'm too high, bring me down. If I'm too low, bring me up. Fill me with life of me. And I may stand here and declare and decree your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let every heart say, thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome. <laughs> Glory, I feel for the presence. I'm trying to move on, but I just feel feel something just pulling me. Thank you, Jesus. We're so glad to have each and every one of you in the house today. Those that are watching online, we thank God for you. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're just going to rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Because when I look back over my life, seeing where the Lord has brought me from, I have to shout hallelujah. Oh, I thank God for saving me. And can I tell you something else? He did not only just save my soul, but he saved me from seen and unseen things. Woo! He has seen me through some things that I've been going through. And so that's why I say, Lord, I thank you for not just saving my soul, but just saving me from destruction saving me from the hand of the enemy when the enemy wanted to take me out when the enemy wanted me to me to lose my mind he say anybody in here maybe i'm the only one but is there anybody in here that can testify that the lord saved my mind Woo. when i could have lost my mind he saved me and so i thank god i want to thank god for lady Colbert and the music ministry department for urging us, us in the presence of the Lord. And I thank God for all our intercessors, our doorkeepers, our media department, all of you beautiful people of God. Amen. I want to thank you all in GTV Nation, those of you who are watching. Thank you for your, your consistent giving. Amen. Because of your giving, amen, we are able to do Jesus' ministry. Hallelujah. And on earlier this week, Matthew 25 outreach program, we were able to bag, I believe, over 167 or 164 bags of groceries that we just wanted to give away to the people, to the community, because we love this city. Amen. And we love the community, and we want to make Matthew 25 come alive. When Jesus said, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was dirty, when I was naked, you clothed me. And so we do mean Jesus. And I want you to pray for us. I want you to continue to keep giving. Amen. Because you're giving on good ground. Amen. And the Lord will reward you. Thank you, Jesus. And there are many ways to give. You see it on the screen. Amen. You can give way to give by Cash App or Givelify, but won't you consider sowing a seed? Don't let nothing stop you from giving. Be 
because the more you eat, the more he'll give back to you. You can't beat God giving, no matter how hard you try. Amen. Genesis, the 32nd chapter. Genesis, the 32nd chapter, beginning with the 24th verse. It says, then Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When he saw that he had not prevailed against him, he touched the socket of his thigh, so the socket of Jacob's thigh was dislocated while he wrestled with him. Look at verse 26. Then he said, let me go, for the dawn is breaking. But he said, I will not let you go. Unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. He said, your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. Look at verse 26 again. Then he said, let me go. For the dawn is breaking. I will not let you go unless. You bless me. I want you to look at somebody, tell your neighbor, I'm going to fight till I get my blessing. Uh, I'm going to fight till I get my blessing. We all know this story. We, when we come to verse 22 of this chapter, it says that Jacob sends his family and all of his possessions over to the brook. Because he's getting ready to meet up with his brother Esau to reconcile. I don't want y'all to miss this. He's getting ready to confront his brother. The brother he did wrong by. May I suggest to you today that before you can make progress in God and be blessed, God is going to make you face the people you wounded. I ain't getting no amens right through in that. God said, before you can live the abundant life, I'm going to make you have to face people you have done wrong. You will never be elevated until you confront what you have done in your past and who you did it to. And I know y'all ain't going to shout right through there because we, we love to always cry the victim and who did me wrong. And I don't know what they think I did to them, but don't nobody wants to be mature enough to admit that we have been the victimizers because there's some people we played, there's some people we lied to, there's some people we lied on, there's some people that we have taken advantage of. And God said, before he can take you to the next level, you're going to have to take responsibility for some of the hurt that you caused. Some of y'all ain't going to never get blessed. That's why you keep struggling with your bills. Uh, y'all don't want to hear this kind of preaching in here today. That, that's why you have always ha seemed to have a spirit of heaviness on you when you come to church because you refuse to confront the folk that you wounded. Jacob, he has to face his brother before he can go to the next level. And the Bible declares that when Jacob got alone, this visible manifestation of the spiritual God comes and wrestles with Jacob. And he doesn't come till Jacob gotten rid of everybody because sometimes God can't deal with you to bless you until he gets alone with you. And he wrestled with God. The Bible said he wrestled with God till daybreak. Uh, I'm, going, I'm only going to one place today. He, he wrestled uh, till daybreak. Let me see if I can help you. God is not wrestling with Jacob all night for nothing. Now, now, let me be theological. It doesn't take God all night to do anything. Anything he wills to do, he can do it with a command. He said, let there be, and stuff started being. It doesn't take God all night to do anything, which means there's got to be a reason why God forced the wrestling match to stay until daybreak. 
daybreak and the spirit messed me up, messed with me well and said we've been missing the revelation of this text because we like to talk about, uh, uh, talk about it being all night as opposed of it being until daybreak. He holds Jacob there until daybreak. God was wrestling with Jacob until daybreak. Now he's going to meet Esau. I don't want you to miss this right here because if you keep reading the story, even down into the next chapter, it wasn't until daybreak where Esau is in place. Mm. So if Jacob would have crossed too early, the timing would have been off. Y'all ain't catching me today. So that God holds Jacob in place. Don't miss what I'm about to tell you. Not to keep him from somewhere, but to keep him at somewhere so that he didn't get somewhere else before he was supposed to be there. He wrestled with him to keep him in that spot until daybreak because if he had gone without a wrestling match, he might have missed Esau and changed his mind. Sometimes, beloved, the fight you're having with God, God makes you fight with him because you want to move too quick. Oh, and sometimes God has to fight you to force you to stay where you no longer want to be. Good God, I know I ain't getting no amens. I'm probably not getting no hearts online. Yeah, he, he forced because you on that, let me give you an example, on that job. Mm -hmm. In that marriage, in that ministry, you're so fast trying to run out of something that God has to keep you right where you are because it's right where you are that's going to give you the lesson you need from where you're going. And when you are not mature enough to stay put on your own, God will force you to stay still. Do I have any witnesses who are thankful in hindsight that God put the brakes on you and didn't let you make the decision too fast? Didn't let you make the choice too quick? How many of y'all are thankful today that he loved you so much that he stopped you before you went too far? So they wrestled uh, Brother Dexter, to daybreak, and, and here's where I'm going to land, and I'm almost done, y'all. Jacob said, I ain't letting you go <laughs> until you bless me. I, I, I refuse to leave without a blessing. Now, now, we know that Jacob has discovered that this is really God because he says it later on. So what Jacob is really saying, he's saying is, I refuse to leave the presence of God without a blessing. I ain't, I ain't coming in his presence and leaving without making sure that he blesses me. Now let me show you a couple of points here, and I'm going to be done. We'll shout before we get to the end, but let me show you. He said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me after the wrestling match because your greatest blessing comes as a result of your greatest struggle. Ooh, I told you we'll shout later on because this is hard to shout on this one. The greater blessing, the greatest blessings you have are the stuff that you learn in the middle of a season. As a matter of fact, the struggle, watch this, left you with a limp. <laughs> so watch this, so that when folks see you limping, they don't view you as a winner. They just view you as a survivor. But what they don't understand is that you are a winner just because you survive. Woo! Anybody in here know that you've been through some stuff that you shouldn't have survived? You've been through some things that should have killed you and your shout today is that I'm a winner because I survived. Will you do me a favor? Just point at three people and tell them I survived. I survived. Come on. Tell them I've overcame it, I've gone through it, and that's the blessing that I've survived. Oh, my God, I feel like preaching this thing. See, 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 Mr. Butler, 
people see you limping and because they see your limp after your fight, they judge your condition by your limp. Preach COVID, I think I will. But they don't know what you went through even to get the limp. <laughs> they were there when God was teaching you something in the limp. See, people look at you and they have no clue of the things you've been through, the things you fought through, the things that God taught you, the things that you overcome. All they see are the after effects, but don't you dare feel sorry for me. Don't you dare have pity on me. This limp is just God's way of keeping a reminder that he got his hands on me. Ooh, would you just put, ooh, we, would you just point at your neighbor and tell him, I know you think I done had a rough life. Tell them I, I look like I had a rough life. I walk like I had a rough life. But I shout because you don't know what the Lord did for me to get me to where I am. And I'm not shouting because of where I am. I'm shouting of what he brought me through. I'm shouting because of what he took me through. I'm shouting because of what I have. Is there anybody in here who can say this next shout is for what I overcame this next shout is for what God brought me through this next shout is what for God would told me point at your neighbor and say don't you feel sorry for me come on look at him say don't you pity me you might wish you was me because God may knew you wasn't mature enough to know how to bless him with a limb he knew he might know you probably wish you was me <laughs> because God knew you wasn't mature enough to know how to give him glory with a limp. Watch this. I, 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 I'm almost done. He said, he said, I ain't going to let you go. I wonder if there anybody came to church with that kind of mindset. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. He said, I ain't going to let you go until you bless me. And he doesn't give Jacob stuff. He said to Jacob, watch this, what is your name? Now let me tell you what the Lord messed me up with. He messed me up with this, Bowers. The Spirit dropped this revelation on me. The Spirit said to me that we always preach just about the new name being the blessing. But there's another blessing in here that we miss. And I said, what is it, Holy Spirit? He says, he's helping Jacob to see the blessing of progress. I, 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 said, I said, progress? He said, yeah, it's going to mess y'all up. He, he said, the angel asked Jacob, what is your name? Now, he's only been asked that one other time. And the last time, Sister Constance, he got asked that, Jacob lied. Y'all didn't see that coming, did you? See, see, y'all remember when his daddy asked, he said, what's your name? And he said, he lied and said, my name was Esau. Y'all remember that? The last time that Jacob got asked that, when his father said, what's your name? He said, Esau. But now, somebody say, but now, he gets asked the same question to see if he's grown in it or whether he's going to be the same person and tell the same lie. Y'all ain't ready for me today. But the fact that he doesn't lie this time means he has some progress in his maturity. See see how y'all don't want to shout? Because the reason y'all don't want to shout on this because y'all are waiting to things are perfect until you give God praise. But every now and then, you ought to shout because it's better than it used to be. <laughs> you done made some progress. You done had some progress. Uh, you ain't the same person, good God Almighty, that you was the last time. See, see, you ain't the same person you used to be. But do I have anybody in here today who can say the blessing I got today is progress? I would have cussed you out last year, but this year I said it under my breath. I would have slapped you in your face last year, but this year I punched the wall. Come on, tell somebody I'm thankful for progress I ain't where I want to be good God let's have church but I'm not where I need to be but I thank God that I'm not where I used to be yep. 
See how church finds some of y'all, Lord? Because you want to sit there like you ain't had progress because you want us to believe that you've been perfect all your life. But the devil is a liar. I'm looking for some real saints today who can say I'm shouting in the devil's face because God put me back in the same similar situation to see if I will act differently this time than the way I acted last time. You ought to throw your head back and shout progress. Now you ain't really say it like you mean it. Come on and shout progress. Or you ought to point at somebody and say I dare you try not to shout. Tell them I done had progress. I know it ain't good grammar but it's good gospel. Tell them I've come from a mighty long way. The last time I was in this situation, I didn't handle it as well as I did this time. The last time I was in this situation, I messed it up, but God gave me another chance. Is there anybody thankful that God gave you another chance? If you ain't too mean, just shout, he gave me another chance the last time I messed up but this time the last time well the last time Jacob got asked this question Sister Lo he lied because he didn't like what his name meant but this time he said watch this brother Quincy I still don't like it but I'm mature enough to own it because God can't change it until you own it. So some of y'all this morning, go ahead and own your trifling ways. Own your tragic decisions. Own your dirty deeds. Own your nasty attitude. Own the way you act because the Lord says when you own it, that's when I'm going to change it. When you own it, that's when I'm going to turn it around. I'm really done, but some of y'all are losing your shout. I'm trying to move on from this, but I feel a pressing in the spirit. Some of y'all this morning need to go ahead and own the stuff you've done. You need to go ahead and own some of your trifling ways because it shows evidence of your progress. Some of y'all this morning, you're trying to be cute, but you better thank God for your progress. You better shout right now because the devil don't even like the fact that you ain't where you used to be and don't think like you used to think. You better thank God for progress. He said, let me hurry up. Y'all tired of me? He said, he said, my name is Jacob. The angel said, not anymore. That I'm changing your name because see in the Middle East changing a person's name was a rite of passage that marked a change in a person's life Jacob means deceiver which was tied to who he had been and the things he had done but the angel said no 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 Jacob I see your progress and I wonder what would have happened if he said again my name is Esau because he'd done that before. But it's only his progress, watch this, that set him up to be released from the history that's been holding him hostage. Ay, yeah, yeah. God is telling me, GTV Nation, to tell you today that if you can just show him progress by owning some of the things you've done, he already know you did it, and the fact that you're still here, the fact that you survived it, means that he's not through with you yet. But God sent me all the way here this morning to tell you that whatever you've done in your past, you are released from it. Your history can't hold you you're delivered from bondage you're loose from his shackles you're released from his spirits so go on and help me preach to somebody and tell them today you are released from whatever you have done in your past let people remind you of it let the devil try to push you back into it but as of today you have been released 
Now watch this. Hold on. Now release from it does not always mean rid of it. Ooh, I, I hope y'all can handle this. I hope y'all can handle this because go over to Isaiah because if you don't get your shout, I, I can't help you. If y'all don't shout on this, I'm going to jump off this stage and drop the mic like coming to America. Because watch this. Uh, uh, for real. If y'all don't get this shout right here, Isaiah 44. And I'm going to show y'all something you probably never seen. Watch this. Because Isaiah 44 verse 1 says, Hear, O Jacob, my servant Israel. Remember, that's his new name. He said, I have chosen. This is what the Lord made you, formed you in the womb. He said, fear not Jacob, my servant, Jehushron, whom I chosen. I know that don't shout, y'all, because that don't make sense. But what you do know, unless you read scholarly books beyond the Bible, is that God gave Jacob a nickname. The nickname is Jehushron. Jacob watch this, is living with a limp that reminds him of his past and that he was released from it. Watch this. But he can't act like he ain't never had it because it left him with the reminder of it. But God gives him a nickname so that he does not live down to the level of his limp. Jeshurun in the Hebrew means, watch this, God straighten it out. <laughs> hold on, hold on. It does not mean God got rid of the limp. It means God made me straight with my limp so that I don't have to live like I got a limp and I don't have to live down to the level of my limp. Okay, y'all ain't got it, y'all ain't got it. When my, when my kids used to come home from school and I asked them a question, and, and I promise y'all if y'all don't shout, I'm done with y'all, all right? I'm done with y'all. But uh, when, when they would come home from school and, uh, and I asked them sometimes, even having a, a bad progress report, and their progress report may not be good, and I said, hey, I said, how was y'all day in school? And you know what the answer was to Mrs. Sister Well? It was straight. I'm through with y'all. All the grades ain't good. Dealing with peer pressure Sometimes they call me and say, Daddy, I'm sick of school. But in spite of all that they wish it was better, they still say, I'm straight. I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. But the next time, let's have some church. Sir. But the next time somebody asks you, how you doing with your broke self? How you doing with your divorce self? How you doing with your unemployed self? I want you to look them dead in the face and say, I'm straight. <laughs> I got a limp, but I'm straight. I got problems, but I'm straight. I got difficulties, but I'm straight. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, everything ain't like I want it to be. I still have some struggles, but I can shout today because in spite of my limp, God, he straightened me out. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I'm shouting because I'm straight. I'm shouting because I got it together. I'm shouting because he gave me another chance. And is there anybody in here who can stand on your feet and say, thank God. I'm straight. I still have a limp. I still have a past. I still have some struggles, but I'm thanking God today that with all of my struggles, I, 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 I still, I still got joy. With all of my disappointments, I still got a smile. Do me a favor, point at three people and say, I'm straight. I'm straight. Now that don't mean I said, that don't mean that I don't have no problems. That don't mean I don't have any difficulties. But I just believe that everything, I said everything, that everything is going to be all right. 
tell your neighbor, say everything is going to be all right. That was the wrong neighbor. Tell another neighbor, say thank God that everything is all right. I got a feeling. I said, I got a feeling. I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right, y'all. Is there anybody in here who can say I'm fighting for my blessing and I'm not leaving until the Lord blesses me? I'm not letting go until the Lord blesses me. Point at your neighbor and tell them, act like you're blessed. Shout like you're blessed. Smile like you're blessed. Wave your hand like you're blessed. Jump like you're blessed. Shake your head like you're blessed. As a matter of fact, every time I turn around, the Lord keeps blessing me. I feel my help coming. I dare you right now to just turn around and say he keeps, he keeps on blessing me. Come on and turn around one more time and say every time I turn around, he keeps on making a way for me. He keeps on blessing me. He keeps on healing me. He keeps on delivering me. He keeps on drying my tears. He keeps on restoring my joy. Tell your neighbor, oh neighbor, he keeps on blessing me. He keeps on restoring me. And I got to give him glory. Come on and say, I got to give him glory with my limping self. I got to shout today with my limping self. Can I preach? Shall I preach? I got to preach because God has been good to me. He's done so much for me. He brought me from a mighty long way. If he brought you, if he brought you, then just wave your hand. If the Lord brought you, just shout for joy. If the Lord brought you, jump up and down. If he brought you, put a smile on your face because you know that the Lord will straighten you out with your limping self. He'll straighten you out with all of your problems. Now just point at three people and say, I'm straight. Say I'm straight. Come on and say I'm straight. I'm fighting for my blessing. I'm trying to stop. But ain't he all right? I'm trying to stop. But he's worthy. He's worthy. Come on and point at somebody and say fight for it. Come on, tell them fight for it. Come on, push through. Till you get it, shout till you get it, run till you get it, holler till you get it, wave your hand till you get it, worship till you get it, expect it till you get it. Come on, take about 15 seconds and just fight for it. Come on. Come on. Take about 15 seconds and fight for your blessing. Fight for your deliverance. Fight for your healing. Fight for your increase. Come on and fight for it.
little favor and put on your pastor's preaching voice and just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm fighting for my children. I'm fighting for my mind. I'm fighting for my health. I'm fighting for my finances. I'm fighting for my church. I'm fighting for everything that God promised me. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up those hands. Come on, just begin to stand up. Just lift your hands in the air. Hallelujah. Saints, we are in a season now we're going to have to fight. We're going to have to fight because the enemy wants us to give up. He wants us to turn around. But we should just say, I came too far to turn around now. Mm, I'm fighting. I got to fight for my blessing. And can let me tell you something. <laughs> Doesn't matter what you've done in your past. Only right now is what counts. If you would just own it. See, you can't do nothing about it. But if you can just own it, that's when God can change it. <laughs> Woo! Jacob, he owned what he done. He owned what he did. Because he owned it, God said, I'm going to change it. Come on, lift those hands in the air. I, I speak a spirit of release in this atmosphere. Oh, yeah, yeah. I speak a spirit of release. I speak to every demonic activity, to every demonic spirit. I speak to every demonic thought that has been oppressing your mind and oppressing your life. God, I speak to you today. I speak to tell you that you are released from every choice, Woo! every mistake, every bad decision you are released and that spirit has no more authority over your life so God with our hands lifted up and our voice filled with praise and with the heart of thanksgiving father I speak now over this congregation I speak of those that are watching those has been been going through Woo. those that feel like giving up God I pray now that you give them the strength to fight fight for their blessing Father I thank you Lord that you're changing things it's, it's getting better <laughs> oh God I feel it in my spirit right now it's about to get better in the name of Jesus who we pray come on let's begin to worship Let's begin the worship. Therefore, change has come over me. Come on, I feel a change oh, in the atmosphere. A wonderful change. What a wonderful change has come over me. Lord, he changed, changed my life completely, changed, and now I see change. I'm so glad he, oh, wonderful, what a wonderful change has come. Oh, me, yes, Lord, he changed, changed oh, my change. life completely, changed, and now I see change. I'm so glad he changed, he changed my life, changed, Come on. he changed my walk, he changed. Come on, somebody out of shout change. I'm so glad he changed my walk. He even changed my tongue. Change. Change. I'm so glad he changed. He changed me. He changed my thoughts. Hallelujah. He even changed my walk. 
it won't always what be like wonderful. this. Weeping may endure for a night, but I dare somebody say a change is coming in the morning. <laughs> oh, oh, I feel a change a in the atmosphere. Change. Those of what you that are here, change. hallelujah, I come to speak over what your words right now change. to tell you that a change is coming on your way. A change is coming in your life. Come on. I don't care how bad it used he to be. He changed my talk. Thank God that I'm not what I used to be. Come he on. I don't care how bad walk. it's been. God can change your he situation. Changed my Those of you that are watching me online, call that number. I'm so call glad. the office. Somebody will call you back in 24 hours. He even Come on. changed my walk. You don't have to stay in the shape that you in. He even changed my talk. Come on, a change is coming. Y'all ready? He come on, let's close this service out. And let's, come on, let's make one big choir. Come on. In. I'm so glad he, he even changed my tone. Change, he even changed.